On February 27, 1902, a British firing squad carried out the execution of convicted war criminal Australian Lieutenant Harry Breaker Morant. A rare thing indeed for the British Army to prosecute one of their own for war crimes in those days. Morant and fellow soldier Lieutenant Peter Hancock stood accused of the murders of several South African Boer prisoners of war and civilians. The Second Boer War between the British and Dutch settlers of South Africa, Boers, started in October of 1899 and was near its end when Morant and Hancock were tried and executed. The nearness to the end of the war led many sympathizers to believe Morant and Hancock were executed for political reasons to mollify the Boers instead of for good moral and legal cause. This sentiment has grown through the years, leaving the memory of Breaker Morant as a martyr to Australians. The presentations of Morant, Hancock, and a third defendant as victims of circumstance was depicted in the 1980 major motion picture Breaker Morant, starring Edward Woodward as Morant. In real life, Morant and his pals had gone on a killing rampage following the death of their commander in combat, killing at a minimum a Boer prisoner of war and eight civilian school teachers and hospital workers. They were also accused of killing missionary Reverend Carl August Daniel Heese, a South African ministering to the sick and injured at the Elm Hospital. Heese threatened to expose the murders Morant and Hancock had committed at the hospital, presumably resulting in his murder to keep him quiet. The two lieutenants were acquitted of the murder of Heese, but were tried, convicted, and sentenced to death for the other nine murders. In fact, the convicted soldiers had left written confessions in their cell prior to being shot. Despite the convictions, confessions, and barbarity of their crimes, Morant especially, and Hancock, have attained status as folk heroes, a scenario aided by the film that implied the men had been executed as scapegoats. Today, efforts to clear the names of the convicted murderers continue, and activists have sought pardons for the long-dead soldiers. Film director Bruce Beresford has stated that he regrets his film has helped perpetuate the myth that the Australians had been framed for murder. Still, the film falsely shows Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany as demanding the death penalty, and British collusion to ensure conviction and execution take place as a political necessity. The film fails to mention that there were a total of six defendants and that Morant and Hancock had the opportunity to gain immunity from prosecution if they would testify against their commanding officer for ordering a no-prisoners-taken-alive policy. The case of Breaker Morant et al. centered on what has become known as the Nuremberg Defense, the defense that accused Nazi war criminals used after World War II when they excused their crimes by claiming they were only following orders. This defense has been legally discredited by the rejection of that theory by the Nuremberg Trial's allied justices. For many weary months, a mountain of incredible proof has piled up against these men. Millions of words of evidence have been heard by the judges. Thousands upon thousands of documents have been examined by the finest legal minds of the four nations. Defense counsel wait with ill-concealed anxiety for the verdict in a trial conducted with scrupulous fairness for the rights of the defendants. Literally tons of paper were removed after each long drawn-out session of court. For five savage and bloody years, humanity has waited for this moment of retribution when the insane ambitions of men like these would come up against the stone wall of world justice. Stryker, Funk, Schacht, and their colleagues. Eleven will hang, six will be jailed, three are acquitted. Sir Jeffrey Lawrence pronounces sentence. Defendant Hermann Wilhelm Goering, on the counts of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the International Military Tribunal sentences you to death by hanging. Defendant Rudolf Hess, on the counts of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the Tribunal sentences you to imprisonment for life. Defendant Joachim von Ribbentrop, 
on the counts of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the tribunal sentence you, sentences you to death by hanging. Defendant Julius Stryker, on the count of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the tribunal sentences you to death by hanging. This is what awaits Goering, Keitel, Rosenberg, and the other apostles of death and hate. The only conceivable end for these merchants of aggression. And as they plunge the world into a bloodbath, it is fitting that they take their final plunge in ignominy. As a question for my students, what do you think of the Nuremberg defense? Are soldiers immune from crimes committed while under orders to do so? Is the coercion of being ordered to partake in a certain activity with the possibility of prosecution and perhaps execution enough to make a reasonable person follow the illegal orders and commit the crimes? Please share your thoughts on the subject in the comments section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines. Your viewership is much appreciated.